Hi booktube, Lynette here and this video is going to be all the books that I managed to read in the month of April. Now if you saw my May TBR last week then you may know that I'm in a bit of a slump. I did read six books which is great, um, that is good for me, um, you know four to eight books is a good number for me to read in a month, it, that's about normal. However, I am struggling a little bit um, with reading. So the end of the month was a lot slower than the beginning of the month, even though the beginning of the month I read quite a chunky book. Who, who knew? Uh, so let's just dive straight in to the books that I actually managed to finish in the month of April. Um, I should say, if you saw my April TBR, this bears no resemblance to that. The month ended up being mood reading and reading library books and I didn't go anywhere near my set TBR or remove anything off of my uh, previous TBR list either. They were all recent editions. Um, so yeah, so that was a fail. We're just going to go with it. So the first book that I finished this month was Nobody But Us by Laura Van Rensburg. This was an advanced reader copy that I had through NetGalley and this book has now released. I had to read it uh, right at the start of the month so that I could get a review up for it before release day. It's a two-handed thriller novel. It's about um, a couple who are going away for a long weekend, just the two of them, to get to know each other a bit better. They've been together for a few months. Um, but not is all as it seems. And I'm not going to say anything else from there because to do anything, the, the action starts straight away because it literally starts with them going away on the weekend. And I can't tell you anything else. All I can tell you is that I was gripped from the first page until the very last page. And I didn't see the twist coming. I didn't work out who either person actually was. I had an idea of who he may be as the book went on, but how her role played into the story, I didn't pick up on that at all. So would I recommend this book? Yes, I absolutely would. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I feel like there may be a follow up to come. Um, not with the same characters, but maybe a similar format. So definitely uh, looking forward to that if it does. And I did give it quite a good rating as well because, like I say, I did enjoy it and I would definitely pick up more from this author in the future. The second book that I finished this month was a contender for my best book of the month. And that book is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. This is the most recent instalment in her series following um, some humans and some fae. The series is called A Court of Thorns and Roses. Uh, the first three books in the series, first four books in the series, deal with Feyre and Resand. I read those a couple of years ago, thoroughly enjoyed them. And this is the next book, only this time we've moved on and we are dealing with one of Feyre's sisters, Nesta. Nesta has been very badly affected by the happenings from the first three books and she has some very poor mental health she is punishing herself um and it's a romance with cassian um who also has some some issues to work through although he's in a much better place than she is and it's they're fated mates they're meant to be together um cassian knows this nesta doesn't want to acknowledge it um, and Cassian is prepared to do what he needs to and what Nesta needs him to for her to heal and for them to come together. It is a very steamy romance, um, I have to say. Miss Sarah J Maas can write a sex scene and I did thoroughly enjoy it. Um, I'm not going to tell any lies. Um, I am fully aware that Sarah J Maas is considered problematic now uh, because of her views on some of the happenings that have been going on in um, other parts of the world. Uh, and I have to say, I don't agree with her stances on things. Um, that doesn't mean I can't appreciate good writing. Um, and that is one of the things that uh, I can't get over in the book world is... <sighs> 
when we've read something, if we then find out the author is problematic, why can't we just acknowledge that actually, yes, the, the author is problematic, but we can acknowledge good writing as well, um, which is what this was for me. I absolutely needed this book um, with everything that is going on at the moment. Um, this was very good for me to read. Uh, it actually helped me in some ways. Um, I did like the mental health representation in this book. Um, I'm not sure how accurate it was from Nesta's point of view, but from the point of view of Cassian, who is at a loss for what to do, um, but feeling like he needs to be there and do something to help that person heal, absolutely. Um, I 100% identified with Cassian. Um, it is uh, having someone that close to you on a self-destruct path um, is not an easy thing to deal with. Um, sorry. Uh, and not knowing what to do about it, not knowing how you can help other than just be present. Um, it's difficult. It's it's very difficult. So I did really identify uh, with Cassian on that. And this is why I say that in some ways we have to be able to acknowledge good writing because yes, um, that, that absolutely 100% uh, did it for me. Um, and yes, I, I would recommend the series if you like fantasy romance. Um, I'm actually considering rereading the series from the beginning um, and just reading right the way through um, to get more, see if I can take more out of it than I already have. The third book that I finished is the only book that was on my previous to 2022 TBR and that book is A Flare of Promise by Jessie Donovan. This is the fourth book in her um, Asylum for Magical Threats series and it brings the series up to date for me um, because there is no more beyond this. There are more stories to tell. Uh, Jesse Donovan has admitted there are more stories to tell, but because these stories don't sell as well as her dragon books, um, she's not invested in writing them because obviously she wants to invest in books that make her money and fair enough. Um, so I'm sad that I've come to the end of the series as it stands hope i'm hopeful that maybe one day people will discover them and read them and see them for the great works that they are uh they are again their fantasy supernatural romance magical realism romance um it's a, about a group of people who have elemental powers um who are feared by the human race um and they are locked up for having those powers um and they're fighting for their freedoms, they're fighting for equal rights. And this is a romance novel following a couple, another couple. Um, initially, they were separated uh, because of other reasons. One thought the other was dead because they had to fake their death. And it's about how they discover each other again and learn to trust each other again. And it was just great fun to read. And as I have done with all of Jesse Donovan's books, Thoroughly enjoyed it. I do recommend them. Um, so if you like a little bit of sexy romance um, with some a little bit of good plot involved, then I definitely recommend Jessie to all of you. And the fourth book that I finished this month was a series continuation. So even though it was new to my TBR for this year, um, I'm not sad about it because it means that I get to continue a series and knock a series or make progress in knocking a series off of my TBR. And that book was A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kemmerer. This is book two in her A Curse So Dark and Lonely series. I read A Curse So Dark and Lonely in uh, March, absolutely loved it. Immediately went and got A Heart So Fierce and Broken from the library. Once I'd um, read the other books, I then had a hankering to continue the story. The first book is about a young woman, Harper, who is pulled out of her world, or our world, um, from Washington DC into the fairy world, or the um, magical world of Emberfall, 
where she meets Prince Ren, who has been cursed to transform into a beast at the end of autumn. And he is reliving the autumn cycle until the curse is broken. Uh, there is also a third character in that book, Grey, who is Prince Ren's commander, guard commander. He is the only guard, royal guard remaining in the palace because he's the only one who doesn't seem to die um, at the hands of the monster. So this book picks up from where the last book left off and um, Harper and Ren are very firmly in love. Grey has disappeared and there is talk of Prince Ren not being the um, heir to the throne. Um, and it's about how they go on the search for Grey and how they go on the search for the heir to the throne. It's also continuing the storyline of their um, war with Sil Shallow and how they make progress towards trying to resolve that or not, as the case may be. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed this book so much that this isn't the library copy. This is my personal copy. I went and bought the entire series because when I'd finished A Curse of Dark and Lonely and A Heart So Fierce and Broken, I knew that they're probably ones I'm going to reread at some point in the future. So I wanted to have my own copies. So that is how much I enjoyed this book. This was another contender for my best book of the month, um, but it isn't quite the best book of the month. It's just up there um, with, with the best of the best. The fifth book that I read this month is The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. I had to get this one read and back to the library because there were other people who had reserves on it. So I wasn't able to renew it and I had to get through it. I picked this up as a book that had a lot of hype. Now, I don't normally get on with hyped books, um, so I wasn't sure how I was going to get on with this, but I kept seeing it and I decided I had to give it a go. And boy, am I glad I did because this is my best book of the month. I absolutely love this book. It made me chuckle from start to finish. It's a romantic comedy. Um, it's supposed to be Kylo Ren. Um, fan fiction. Uh, I didn't see the Star Wars parallel other than the fact that they'd described um, the main character Adam um, as being an exact replica of Adam Driver who plays Kylo Ren in the Star Wars films. That was the only comparison I saw. Um, it's a grumpy sunshine romance, um, although grumpy isn't quite so grumpy as he's made out to be. Uh, but yes, it's about Adam and Olive. Uh, Olive's friend um, wants to date Olive's ex-boyfriend, but she doesn't want to because it's Olive's ex-boyfriend. Olive doesn't care. Olive had no interest. She only went out with her previous boyfriend because she thought she had to. So she wants her best friend Anne to get together with Jeremy. The only way that's going to happen is if Anne thinks that Olive is moving on. So Olive sees Anne, or Olive has told Anne that she's dating someone, that she's going on a date. And then she sees Anne in the corridor. So she decides she needs to uh, kiss the first man that she sees. And it happens to be Adam, who is a professor where uh, Olive is a graduate student and thereby follows some humorous um humorous moments uh, as the two of them start talking adam agrees to fake date olive to help her out uh, to make sure that anne definitely does go on dates with jeremy and yeah i actually really really enjoyed this and i enjoyed this because for me it was um it was a slightly different take on the romantic comedy now romantic comedy Obviously, the, the couple are in humorous situations. Usually, it's because of something that has happened between the two of them. However, this wasn't that. This was because Adam and Olive kept finding themselves in each other's orbit um, at different events where they were public. And Olive's friends made Olive go and do couple things with Adam. Um, things that Adam and Olive hadn't agreed to actually do. Uh, 
and it was humorous from that point of view um so it wasn't actually olive and adam putting themselves in the, in this funny situations or doing things to put them in the funny situations it was olive's friends doing it to them for me that was a complete breath of fresh air because a lot of these books are very very samey these days for me and i absolutely loved it to the point that I went on NetGalley and tried to uh, get approved for a copy of Love on the Brain, which is Ali Hazelwood's follow-up book. Um, sadly, I didn't get approved, but I will definitely be uh, picking that up. And definitely, I'll probably go and check out other work by her as well, because this was just so much fun. I chuckled from start to finish. I'm so glad I read this. Um, because, yes, I had picked this up around about the time that everything started falling apart in April um yeah so I this was a breath of fresh air right when I needed one and absolutely 100% my best book of the month the final book that I finished in the month of April wraps up a series and that book is A Vow So Bold and Deadly which is the final book in the Curse So Dark and Lonely series by Bridget Kemmerer we follow on from what's been going on in book two can't really say anything because if i do that will ruin book two for you but thoroughly enjoyed this um i don't think it was as good i think the ending was a bit flat but it was a good ending um and everything came right and yeah i think it ended in the best way to be perfectly honest with you um I just feel that it could have been slightly better written literally the ending like happened in that <laughs> so there is the final battle was literally happened on a page um and i think there's more to come um there is one character right at the end of here who that's their only showing throughout the entire series they're talked about earlier on in the series and i think there might be a story there for them I hope there is because I'd love to hear more from this world. Thoroughly enjoyed it. So glad that I had actually been and bought the entire series at the point that I finished A Heart So Fierce and Broken because I was then ready to move on and I didn't have to wait for it to come free at the library. If you like YA fantasy romance, these books then are definitely for you. Uh, they are very, very good and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Those are the six books that I managed to finish in April. What books did you manage to get through in April? Or are you hitting a slump a bit like I have been? Um, please let me know in the comments down below. I love chatting with you all there. And if you've enjoyed this video, then please do give me a like. And if you haven't already, then subscribe to the channel. There's been quite a flurry of new subscribers recently. So welcome to you all. Um, and I thank you for being here. If you didn't already know, then I make videos once a week. They go up on Mondays at 6.30pm UK time. And I do very much look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.